this is Jan Kleinschmidt for JLore. Today we're going to talk about the rumen and the TMR wagon, part one. Feeding strat strategies that optimize rumen function also maximize milk production and milk component percentages and yield. Due to the genetic superiority of our modern-day dairy cow, it has been a race to see how much feed we can get into animals to allow their genetic makeup to do what it is supposed to do to transform nutrients into milk and components. Not only has genetics and nutrition played a major role in maximizing milk production, but farm management practices, labor, and facilities play a role as well. The rumen accounts for approximately 25% of the total body weight. We are managing a very large fermentation system that has its own ecosystem, efficiencies, and processes. The rumen can hold approximately 200 liters of material and fluid, and an estimated 150 billion micro microorganisms per teaspoon, that includes bacteria, protozoa, and fungi, are present in its contents. This type of environment is maintained at a, at a temperature range of 38 to 40, de 40 degrees Celsius, that's 100 Fahrenheit to about 108 Fahrenheit. The rumen through its strong musculature allows mixing and churning of digesta, typically one to two ruminations per minute. The movement of the rumen mixes the contents, promoting turnover and accessibility of the coarser forage particles for regurgitation, cud chewing, size reduction, and microbial digestion. Fine forage particles, dense concentrate particles, and materials which have become hydrated tend to congregate near the bottom of the rumen. Particles tend to move out of the rumen as they are reduced in size through cud chewing and microbial action. The microbes also pass from the rumen for possible digestion in the lower gastrointestinal tract. Long hay diets produce contents with a large, less dense floating layer beneath the gas dome with relatively liquid contents and, and suspended fiber beneath. The floating mat is composed of the more recently ingested forage. The function of the rumen as a fermentation vat in the presence of certain bacteria promote the development of gases. These gases are found in the upper part of the rumen with carbon dioxide and methane making up the largest proportion. The proportion of these glass gases is dependent upon rumen ecology and fermentation balance. Typically, hydrogen makes up about 0.2%, oxygen 0.5%, nitrogen 7%, methane 26.8%, and carbon dioxide 65.5%. The objective of feeding dairy cattle nutritionally balanced diets is to provide a rumen environment that maximizes microbial production and growth. When designing rations for ruminants, the needs of both the animal and the rumen microorganisms must be considered. The microbial population in the rumen consists of bacteria, protozoa, and fungi. The majority of the concentration is as bacteria. The methane-producing bacteria are a special class of microorganisms responsible for regulating the overall fermentation in the rumen. The protozoa are generally found in the rumen when diets of high digestibility are fed. Protozoa actively ingest bacteria as a source of protein. They also appear to be a stabilizing factor for fermentation and products and, contr and contribute to fiber digestion. Although their benefit to ruminant animals is still not very well defined. The anaerobic fungi are the most recently recognized group of rumen microbes. When animals are fed a high forage diet, rumen fungi may contribute up to 8% of the microbial mass. While it is still unclear whether these fungi are functionally significant, they do appear to have a role in fiber digestion. The rumen provides a site where the rumen microorganisms can digest carbohydrates, proteins, and fiber. Through this digestion process, energy or volatile fatty acids and microbial protein that can be utilized by the animal are produced. Let's talk about rumen pH. The whole rumen function, maximizing feed intake, milk yield, and component issues come down to a two-letter word, pH. 
There is a comfort zone in which everything runs healthy and most more efficiently. Above or below this comfort zone, inefficiencies begin to occur. Fiber digesting bacteria growth is favored when rumen pH is between 6 and 6.8, while starch digesting bacteria grow, growth is favored by pH from 5.5 to 6. Fiber digesting bacteria growth is favored when rumen pH is between 6 and 6.8 while starch digesting bacteria growth is favored by a pH from 5.5 to 6. The high producing cow must maintain a pH near 6 for optimal growth of both bacteria populations, resulting in a favorable volatile fatty acid pattern and yield. Several factors impact changes in rumen pH. One. The type of diet can shift pH, with high forage rations favoring a pH over 6. Forages stimulate higher rates of saliva secretion, and saliva contains bicarbonate, which buffers the rumen and increases acetate production. Forage carbohydrates, primarily cellulose and hemicellulose, are not degraded as rapidly by the rumen as are carbohydrates and concentrates, such as starch and sugar. Physical forms of feeds, that's ground, pelleted, or chopped, will change the size of the feed particle. If the forage particle size is too short, a forage mat in the rumen cannot be maintained. Fiber digestion is decreased and rumen pH is lowered. Saliva production is also reduced due to less cud chewing. Cows typically spend over 500 minutes of chewing time per day. 50% of the cows should be ch chewing their cuds when resting. 3. If concentrates are ground too fine, starch is exposed to microbial digestion and there is increased degradation. Rumen pH drops and propionic acid production increases, resulting in a drop in butter fat percent and a rise in milk protein percent. Steamrolling, pelleting, or grinding will, cha will change starch structure, which can be beneficial, it increases rumen microbial growth, or negative, it increases the risk of rumen acidosis. 4. Wet rations can reduce rumen pH due to less saliva production to wet the feed for swallowing. If the wet feed is silage, less chewing is needed to reduce particle size, lowering rumination time. Silage can have a pH below 4, increasing the acid load. 5. Adding on saturated fats and oils, for example vegetable oil, can reduce rumen pH and si shift volatile fatty acid patterns. Oils can reduce fiber digestibility, decrease rumen pH, be toxic to fiber digesting bacteria, and or coat fiber par particles, reducing fiber digestion. 6. The method of feeding will change the rumen environment. TMR's stable rumen pH, synchronized degradable protein and fermentable carbohydrate availability, increase dry matter intake, and minimize feed selection. If concentrates are fed se separately, limit the amount to 2 to 3 kgs of dry matter per meal. Avoid high levels of starch containing grains and evaluate the effect of feed processing. To summarize this point, the focus of rumen pH as a monitor of healthy rumen function is as important as balancing diets simply for maximum dry matter intake or maximum milk, milk yields. It is su suggested especially during an era of particularly high grain prices, that we allow the genetic superiority of our modern-day dairy cow to drive maximum milk production, while the nutritionists and dairy producers focus on maximum rumen health and rumen efficiency. The main objective in feeding management is to increase the dry matter intake of cows. With this increase should come higher levels of milk production, milk components, and herd fertility. In order for this to happen, close attention to energy, ration digestibility, rumen fill, palatability, temperature, body weight of the animal, feeding conditions, environment, ventilation, frequency of feeding, and water intake and quality are necessary. Achieving optimum dry matter intake through nutrition and feeding management involves 1. Producing the highest quality forages possible. 
Two, dry and transition cow nutrition and management. Three, monitoring body condition score of the herd. Four, bunk management to maximize dry matter intake. Five, proper protein, energy, vitamin, and mineral nutrition. And six, ensuring herd hoof health. Cows who cannot walk, do not eat, are more prone to reproductive and metabolic disorders and are likely to be pre- prematurely culled from the herd. This is Jan Kleinschmidt for JLOR because nutrition matters.